Today, I wanted to share with you this Excel spreadsheet that I designed to help our farmers to estimate their crops daily water demand uh, so that they can irrigate responsibly without causing too much drainage. Uh, let me show you quickly how this calculator works and then I will get into more details of why this calculator exists and how this works and how accurate it is. In the top section of the calculator, let's put in our station name. I'm going to go with Samarkand. It's just to identify our location. Uh, Samarkand is a beautiful city in the heart of Central Asia. Uh, its latitude is 39.65 degrees decimals. And its sea level elevation is 700 meters. And all this information is required, so you really have to put this in for the calculator to work. If any of this information is missing, the calculator will not work. And the wind speed measurement height, let's leave it at 2 meters for now. Um, further down, we have three required columns and we have three optional columns. Let's just put in required information. Um, the first column is date, April 15th. The minimum temperature in that day was 7.5 degrees and maximum temperature was 12.5 degrees. And voila, we have our ET naught calculated for us for that day, which is 2.1 millimeters. Let's keep logging. 8 degrees was minimum the next day and maximum temperature was 14 and our ET naught is 2.35. Let's keep logging more. Um, as you can see, we didn't have to provide it too much information for it to be able to calculate evapotranspiration for us. Um, why is that? Why didn't we provide more information? Well, if you have more information available, the climate data available, you can open up the hidden columns up top. If you notice the plus button, if you click it, more columns will open up and then you can put in more information. For example, your psychrometer day readings, your dry and wet bulb, your dew point, your relative humidity data, your wind speed, sunlight hours, radiation. I mean, you can put it in. Um, but the problem our local farmers have is they do not have access to reliable climate data. So we needed to provide them a way of estimating evapotranspiration with the minimum data they had at their possessions or they could get at minimum cost. So that's why this calculator had to be designed. Now, how, how accurate is it? I had a chance to compare the result of this calculator with the result of the weather station that our family has installed in our orchard. Um, it's a weather station by Davis. It has a 24-hour aspirated fan. So it should be pretty accurate. And I compared the 31 days of August um, data with that of the calculator and the accuracy was, it was surprisingly accurate. The discrepancy was only 5%. The calculator actually overestimated ET naught by only 5% in those 31 days. And for our purposes, I thought it was quite accurate. Um, how does it achieve that accuracy? How is that even possible? Um, I followed the FAO 56 manual uh, to calculate evapotranspiration. Um, just like ASCE guidelines, they both use penman monti combination model. Uh, and that combination model requires wind speed, solar radiation data, and uh, the humidity data. Um, actually, the, the saturation vapor pressure and actual vapor pressure but we didn't provide it any wind speed or humidity or radiation information. How is it still able to um, use that equation? Um, actually, FAO 56 manual has a section called uh, dedicated for estimating missing climate data. 
and I try to follow the guidelines of that manual to the best of my understanding. Um, so it turns out if you can provide some sort of information about the climate that this data is logged for, um, it's possible to estimate missing climate information pretty accurately. I was really surprised at that. Uh, by default, when you calculate, uh, when you download this calculator, it will be assuming that you are in an arid interior location with moderate winds. However, if your climate is different than what I just described, then you have to make certain um, changes to the assumptions the calculator makes. Let's go into the inputs tab of the calculator. And if you notice, um, I have some inputs and coefficients and some constants put in that the combination model uses. Um, what you have to look into is that the first thing we have to look into is actually the, the wind speed. By default, according to FAU 56, if you don't have any wind speed information, the safe starting point must be 2 meters per second because it was the average um, observed wind speed of a lot of weather stations throughout the world. However, if your country, if your location experiences very little winds, you can, you can go ahead with 1 or 1.5. Um, so as you see, you need to have some information about the climate you're in, some general information. And the further down, the next very important information is the dew point offset. Uh, I mentioned that the penman monteith combination model needs saturation vapor pressure uh, to be able to calculate the evapotranspiration. But for that, we had to provide it some uh, humidity information, but we didn't. It turns out if we have an idea about our climate, we can also estimate our humidity pretty quite accurately, actually. If you're in an arid climate, you can assume that your dew point temperature will be around 2 degrees Celsius less than your daily minimum observed temperature. If you are in a humid climate, it will be the same as your minimum temperature. That is, your dew point temperature will be the same as your minimum daily temperature. So if you're in a humid climate, just go ahead and change this cell value to zero. If you're in arid climate, then leave it as at two. You can try with one. Um, in Uzbekistan, I even saw a four degree difference between the dew point and minimum temperature during the month of July. Uh, but usually for August, two degrees offset was pretty accurate. And also further down, we have a KRS. It's a correction coefficient for solar radiation. If you are in an interior location, leave it as 0 0.16. However, if you're at a coastal location, if you have a coast nearby, then you have to change it to not 0.19. Okay, so that's it. Once you make, yeah, you can leave everything else as is. I mean, just ignore everything else uh, for now. Um, unless you also have uh, your calibration data for Angstrom formula for AS and BS, but just leave it as is. And uh, once you do that, what happens is if you open up the second set of hidden columns, you will see that with all this information, with just this information provided, this is how much calculations it's, it's able to perform in the background. It can calculate your solar declination. It can calculate the relative Earth-Sun distance, uh, right? It calculates the uh, sunset hour angle, extraterrestrial radiation, total daylight hours, and all the uh, humidity related models like saturation vapor pressure, vapor pressure deficit, actual vapor pressure, and, and all that. Um, there you go. 
Um, but as I said, if you have some information to put in, just go ahead, put in whatever information you have. It will make, it will try to make the best use of that information given. So if you have just mean temperature, just put it in, it will use it. If you have a psychrometer data, just put it in, it will use it. Um, one more uh, warning though, if you have your wind speed information collected from your local weather station, like a climate station, the usual wind speed height is logged at 10 meter height. If that's the case in your weather station, then you have to make sure to update the wind speed height. For example, um, if the wind speed height is 10 meters and wind speed, for example, is two meters per second, if you look at the U2, it assumes that if wind speed is two meters per second at 10 meter height, it must be 1.5 meters per second at two meters height. Okay, so for evapotranspiration uh, model to work, to, to, to estimate accurately, we need to provide it wind speed at two meters height. Um, all right, I really hope um, this calculator would, will be useful for some people, especially if you face the same challenges as our local farmers do, which is the lack of access for reliable um, climate data. Um, if, uh, uh, another disclaimer, I'm not a scientist and I don't have a scientific uh, background. Um, so if you find some bugs or some mistakes in any of the calculations, of course, the calculations are here. You can just open up the cells, right? I mean, to, to, to look at the formulas. Um, if you see any bugs in any of those formulas, please just let me know uh, so that I can, I can correct them and then re-release the calculator. Um, thank you.